It is indeed a pleasure to talk to Frank Shorter. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Frank, he's a Gator, by the way, and in 1972 at the Munich Olympics, he was a gold medalist. I'm going to talk about with, uh, that with him, but I want to go back because he and I are actually from the same hometown, Middletown, New York. What are, what are the chances? What was it like growing up? Did you run back then when you were young? I actually did, and I was probably the only kid in the summer who was out there running. And um, it didn't seem strange to me. And we talked about the park in which I used to run. And we had a little park called Davidge Park. And up there, it was shady. So I would, I would run in the summer when I was home. I went to a prep school. And when I was home from school, I did that. What and, made you decide to run? <clears throat> well, it really was kind of stref, stress relief and an escape. Um, it turned out that, that, well, in 2011, I finally revealed <clears throat> we had a family of nine kids and two adults, and there was, a lot, there was a lot of abuse in the family. And it was a way for me to escape and feel safe. And at the time, I, I really didn't realize it was also stress relief. It, it got me out there, and it, it was something that calmed me down. And I just enjoyed doing it. And uh, Middletown was the perfect place to do it, as you know. Um, years later, we had a 10K race around Middletown that we started, <clears throat> and I used to tell people, 10K covers the whole town. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen all of Middletown. Yeah. When did you realize you were pretty good as a runner? Well, towards the end of my uh, Yale um, education, my undergraduate education, I um, ran in the NCAA championship and actually won the six mile at the time. It was called the 10,000 meters. And it wasn't very often that someone from Yale would win a track and field event like that. And I decided um, that I would see if I could make the 1972 Olympic team because I graduated in 1969. So I was going to medical school, but I decided, no, I, I couldn't do that and go. I tried to arrange for that. It didn't work out. I came down to Florida because Jimmy Carnes, who was the coach here, was one of the best organizers on the planet. And for those of you who don't know, Jimmy Carnes was actually the 1980 track and field coach for the U.S. And none of us made any money at the time, <clears throat> and we couldn't really support ourselves. And Jimmy arranged for us to all be able to come down here. He found free housing for us. You know, he made sure that we could get to meets. Um, and he, he just was a, a very good, and can't put it any other way, he was a good promoter of, of the sport. And um, I decided to come down because Jack Batchelor, who designed this shirt, uh, was down here as an entomology student and PhD student. And he was the best distance runner in the country at the time. So I said, I'll go down and train with the best. And I didn't realize I was going to come down and then other people were going to do the same thing. It attracted. And in that era, there were things that we called enclaves around the United States. There was one in Boston. There was one in Los Angeles. And there developed this Florida Track Club enclave in Gainesville. And it sort of became the place you went. And the reason was we knew, those of us who could be successful, and for three of us, Jack Batchelor and, and Jeff Galloway and I, made the Olympic team in, in uh, the distance events, the 10,000 and the marathon. And another fellow who came down from NYU, Byron Dice, uh, who had a very successful uh, career at Santa Fe College, came down, and we all formed this track team, and he was on the Olympic team for Jamaica. And, and we realized that when you get together in a group like that and work together and support each other, you all get better than you would ever trying to do it on your own. And so that was the spirit that kind of developed here in Gainesville. So this is the 50th anniversary reunion of all those people who were down there, uh, were here 50 years ago, who were, had the goal of getting to the Olympics, and lo and behold, many of us did. Speaking of the Olympics, what's your memory of Munich? Two memories. One was the massacre of the Israeli athletes. I actually heard the shots. Wow. I was sleeping actually on the balcony of our room, and... Uh, I always tell the story, there was another runner from the U.S. named Dave Waddle who won the gold medal in the 800 meters. 
Well, we were sort of rebellious then, and we had an individual room, and David just gotten married, so he and his wife were in our room, and I slept on the balcony on a mattress, and I was out there and heard those shots, and it was four in the morning, and uh, I knew something had happened. I, I knew it wasn't door slamming. And we lived through the next, those of us as athletes lived through the next day and a half feeling we were going home. But lo and behold, they decided to continue with the games, delaying a day, and uh, we, all, we all got to run. And then, of course, the other memory is um, I ran the marathon. I had trained with a strategy to, at a certain point in the race, and I trained even here to run my training in a way to use this strategy in the marathon. And I was going to bolt from the field much earlier than really happened in marathons. At that time, every, everybody started the marathon, people fell off, and the last person there would win. And I said, no, I'm going to make it a track race because we're the track club. And, <laughs> and I'd done this training on the track. So I did at nine miles, I got a lead. No one went after me. I maintained it to the end, um, and I won by two minutes. Wow! In in the marathon, so <clears throat> that was the other moment. And I thought back um, as I was crossing the finish line about how, you know, the plan worked. And I guess everyone responds differently. I would think slightly differently if they win a gold medal in the marathon in one of these kind of events. But my reaction was all the planning and all the training and everything, it worked. That's cool. Do you still run? Yeah, I do about three times a week, but I do what's now called um, run walk. And actually for the runners out there, it, they know what that is because it's a theory of and a training method developed by Jeff Galloway, who is one of the people here for the 50th celebration after he went from home from the Olympics, he stayed in the sport as well. And he has become a, a, a huge figure in the ongoing development of running for everyone, not just the elite kind of people. But he started that years ago. And those of us <clears throat> who are here today, we're doing what Jeff first came up with 30 years ago. <laughs> Let me end with this, Frank. Uh, I have read where training here in Florida in Gainesville in the heat didn't bother you. Is that no. true? True. Absolutely true. We all have a range, and my, my performance range is in the higher degree of temperature area. I actually did a race um, here, and again, for the track um, nuts, as we call them, um, running the 10,000 meters anywhere around 28 minutes in an international competition is considered pretty darn good. I went to an all-comers meet here in Gainesville and ran a, 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 a 10,000 meters in 92 degree heat and 90% humidity and ran about eight seconds over 28 minutes. So, you know, I just, I run well in it and I think I would encourage all the athletes out there who are runners or in other areas, cycling, whatever, you have your optimum range. And, and when you find that, be happy with it and work on that. Don't work on running in the cold if you're me because you're not going to get much better at it. It's been a real pleasure to talk to Frank Shorter again, 50th anniversary of the Florida Track Club and, of course, 1972, the gold medal in Munich. Frank, a pleasure. Thank you for doing it. Thanks.